Episode 126, Red and Black. That long and chilly beast, how could she, who had raised a nest of little snakes, not be able to tell what that was? It's under my skirt, ah! Blair let out a raspy shriek, her voice sounding even shakier now. It's coiled itself around my leg. Lucius swam to Blair's side and reached out a hand towards her skirt. Blair was so startled that she felt a layer of heat spread over her cold body. Her originally stiff body became stiffer yet. Don't cry. I'm just catching the snake. Lucius replied in his deep voice. His arms were rather long to begin with, so when he stood at the same height as Blair, his hand could just nicely reach Blair's leg. Who? Who's crying? Why are the males accusing me of crying all the time? I'm freaking out, not crying. Blair blinked and gently trod the water. She didn't dare to move recklessly, her senses occupied by the chilly and smooth water snake. It would be terrible if the poisonous snake bit her. There are babies in my tummy. Damn, it's coming towards me. Blair was so freaked out that she wanted to scream out loud and it was only by trying very hard did she manage to not squeak out any sound. Lucius's hand felt its way up before grabbing the water snake in a sudden movement. Watch out! The scream stuck in her throat finally managed to break through the barrier. Blair, who could sense the snake twisting violently, screamed as she struggled. Caught it. Lucius retracted his hand from underneath Blair's skirt before retreating some distance. Lucius's hand was tightly gripped around a dark green snake. Though slim, it was nearly two meters long. He turned his head towards Blair, his expression momentarily dazed. In the clear lake, the girl's slightly bulging tummy looked so adorable, especially since he knew there were several little lives inside it right now. Upon hearing this, Blair let out a long exhale of foul air. Don't kill it. She swam towards Lucius and had only glided through the water twice when she realized that her skirt had floated up. She hurriedly held it down, but the redness on her face didn't dissipate so easily. <sighs> Lucius looked at the snake he was holding and asked, does it remind you of your own children? As though sensing that the one in control of his fate was Blair, the green snake turned its head towards Blair. Although it had a green body, its eyes were a dark shade of red and appeared very watery. However, there was no hint of emotion in them. Could this be a snake beast man? Blair asked. Her heart couldn't help but soften as she looked at this pair of familiar looking eyes. Lucius pinched the neck of the green snake tightly to force it to open its mouth, and two slim and long fangs were revealed as the snake did so. It's already an adult. Seems like it's just a wild snake. I see. Blair felt dejected. She wondered how her little snakes were doing. At that time, they were still sleeping at home. Would Stephen remember to take care of them? Would their lives be in danger in the city of Beastmen? The more she thought about this, the more worried she got. Blair washed her face before saying, let's set it free. Lucius tossed the snake into the grass several tens of meters away before wading towards Blair. I haven't taken a shower in many days. I'd like to bathe. Blair turned away from Lucius. I'll stand here and protect you. Fine, whatever. After going through this one to two months of drought and rushing for seven to eight days, Blair's hair was feeling incredibly greasy. Even soaking it in the water didn't seem to cleanse it properly. Blair gazed around and, making use of whatever she could find, grabbed a handful of mud and smudged it on her head. After washing with the mud twice, the grease from her hair actually came off. Since she was wearing loose-fitting clothes anyway, Blair boldly took off her undergarments. After she was done bathing, she even scrubbed those little articles of clothing. She felt really glad that she was wearing Stephen's snakeskin, which was so cooling and easy to dry that day. 
However, it wasn't so easy for her to put on her tube top again after she was done washing it, as the tube top was too tight. She had to be careful as she put it back on. If she wasn't, she would sink into the water. Has it shrunk? Blair tried stretching the tube top, but it's still so elastic, it doesn't seem like it has shrunk. She then looked down and pinched her own breast. Oh, ow! It hurts. Blair was pretty sure that was what was going on. She turned her body slightly and peeked at Lucius with her peripheral vision. Lucius's gaze was fixed on Blair the entire time. When he saw her looking at herself, he asked, Are you done? Yes. Blair crawled to the shore and placed the hand that was holding the tube top behind her back. She lowered her head and didn't dare to look at Lucius's expression. Between avoiding embarrassment and comfort, Blair decided on the latter after some hesitation. Now she could only brace herself and face this. Lucius merely glanced at Blair before transforming into an eagle and sending her back to the nest. Phew. Watching as Lucius left, Blair let out a long exhale. The snakeskin fabric was rather sturdy. He probably can't tell, right? He didn't show any abnormal signs either. With this thought, Blair lowered her head. However, when she caught a clear view of those two protruding dots, only one word came to her mind. Fuck! When they got back to the nest, Blair tried putting on the tube top again. With no one watching her this time, she could move as much as she could to squeeze into it. She did manage to put it on all right, but it was so tight that she felt suffocated, and even the dense snake prints appeared stretched. She only persisted for several minutes before removing it. In the forest, a leopard with bloodshot eyes agilely climbed up a tree before quietly shifting to another tree. Underneath the tree, a white tiger slept due to exhaustion. The leopard turned around and revealed a gloating smile as he glanced at the tiger. Hmm. He had deliberately taken Rex for a wild run for several days and only made his escape when the latter was at his most exhausted. By the time Rex woke up, it would all have been too late. By walking on the trees, regardless of how formidable Rex was, he wouldn't be able to give chase by trailing his scent on the trees. The joy this brought to the leopard seemed to lessen the fatigue he was feeling. Somewhere else, Stephen heard the sound of waves. He could sense Blair more and more strongly. She should be in the vicinity. Stephen flicked out his tongue. He could even figure out Blair's scent in this place. Screech! Stephen looked up at the sky and saw tens of black figures moving, resembling pesky flies. Darn it. That group of eagle beastmen actually managed to find him again. Although he didn't much conceal his tracks, there was much camouflage in the forest. For the eagle beastmen to be able to spot him, their eyesights were indeed impressive. If there was a chance, he would get rid of them. For now, his priority was to find Blair. Lucius was flying in the skies above the grassy land. The prey on the ground were as small as ants, but he could see them clearly with his black and sharp eagle eyes. Chirp, chirp! Several young eagles flew from the direction of the forest and shouted to Lucius. Lucius abruptly stopped in his tracks and stared at them in shock. What? You saw the snake beast man? That's impossible. He had only brought Blair here yesterday. How did the snake beast man, who crawled on land, manage to catch up to them today? Are you sure it's him? He's a snake beast man with black and red prints. <laughs> The young eagle replied in a defiant tone, I've never been wrong all days, and only made his escape when the latter was at his most exhausted. By the time Rex woke up, it would all have been too late. 
By walking on the trees, regardless of how formidable Rex was, he wouldn't be able to give chase by trailing his scent on the trees. The joy this brought to the leopard seemed to lessen the fatigue he was feeling. Somewhere else, Stephen heard the sound of waves. He could sense Blair more and more strongly. She should be in the vicinity. Stephen flicked out his tongue. He could even figure out Blair's scent in this place. Screech! Stephen looked up at the sky and saw tens of black figures moving, resembling pesky flies. Darn it. That group of eagle beastmen actually managed to find him again. Although he didn't much conceal his tracks, there was much camouflage in the forest. For the eagle beastmen to be able to spot him, their eyesights were indeed impressive. If there was a chance, he would get rid of them. For now, his priority was to find Blair. Lucius was flying in the skies above the grassy land. The prey on the ground were as small as ants, but he could see them clearly with his black and sharp eagle eyes. Chirp! Chirp! Several young eagles flew from the direction of the forest and shouted to Lucius. Lucius abruptly stopped in his tracks and stared at them in shock. What? You saw the snake beast man? That's impossible. He had only brought Blair here yesterday. How did the snake beast man, who crawled on land, manage to catch up to them today? Are you sure it's him? He's a snake beast man with black and red prints. The young eagle replied in a defiant tone, I've never been wrong before. It's a black and red snake and there are many adult eagle beast men chasing after him. Followed by adult eagle beast men? Lucius's heart sank. He instantly dove downwards. He couldn't let that group of eagle beast men find him, else Blair's whereabouts would be exposed. Hey, you're going to scare away all the prey. A young eagle shrunk in his stomach that had gone flat due to hunger and was prepared to fly elsewhere to capture prey when he halted upon hearing his brother's words. Let's go back to where the adult eagles are. Perhaps they have also brought a female back. Yeah, let's go and look at the pretty females. Several young eagles flapped their little wings and found the adult eagle beast men following Stephen. Their father was among them. It's you? The young eagle's father flew out of the crowd and hovered before the young eagles. The young eagles fought to speak. Dad, we're here to see the females. A grown eagle beast man brought back a female yesterday. He said a formidable snake beast man is coming to abduct the female. He told us to keep a watch. The young eagle beast man's father let out a high-pitched screech as he said excitedly to his companions, No need to follow the snake beast man anymore. Blair is at the sea cliff. Scream! The eagle beast men let out excited screeches that resonated throughout the entire forest. Stephen glanced at them, feeling odd. He suddenly had an ominous feeling. This is bad. Blair might have been discovered. Several black figures flew by the clifftop of Seacliff briskly, making the atmosphere appear harsh and severe. The eagle beast men searched all the nests at Seacliff, but they couldn't find the female anywhere. Where's the female? With a ferocious gaze, the grown eagle beast man asked the young eagles. Under the intimidation of someone with more animal stripes than them, the young eagles were so terrified that they kept shivering. They instantly sensed these adult eagle beast men's killing intent towards Blair. Even though these young eagle beast men and that adult eagle beast man were basically father and son, none of them dared to make a sound. Let me tell you, that isn't a female. She's just a good looking monster who has a knack at bewitching males. With her around, many beast men will die. Quick, tell me where they are. The young eagle stared at each other and finally quietly led them to Lucius's nest. They were here, but Lucius just flew away with the female earlier. In which direction? 
there. Stephen followed closely. Upon seeing the eagle beast men stop on the cliff, his heart was put to ease. He could sense that Blair was somewhere else. Some of the eagle beast men flew towards the direction pointed out by the young eagles. Just to be safe, some continued to tag behind Stephen. Stephen sneered inwardly. Seems like he had no choice but to settle this inconvenience once and for all. With Blair on his back, Lucius flew through the forest and didn't dare fly in the skies. Why is that group of eagle beast men here? Are Stephen and Roger here? Blair felt ecstatic. Immediately after, though, she shook her head. Stephen said he would reach the seaside in another two weeks' time. Roger isn't as fast as him, either. It's a coincidence, I guess. Lucius continued flying quietly. Suddenly, Blair, who was lying face down on Lucius's back, let out a moan. Lucius instantly landed on the ground. What's the matter with you? Lucius asked nervously. With a hand over her stomach, Blair panted twice. I feel a little uncomfortable. Something is bumping against my stomach. Lucius lifted Blair horizontally and gazed around, his tone urgent. I'll bring you to the Peacock tribe to look for a doctor. You're female. They won't ignore you. With one arm hooked over Lucius's neck, after resting for a while, Blair felt much better. Hence she said, I'm fine. Fleeing is more important. Lucius took a look at Blair's countenance and continued in the same direction. 